stuff that Paul is into. Uh, a good start would be for you to check out newworldview.com and read uh, the emerging worldview. And please note at the table, right in the back of the room, uh, Paul has set up uh, books, CDs, information on New World View. Uh, please check that out. Uh, Paul is a musician, a composer, an essayist, a book reviewer, a film reviewer, an investigator. Um, he ran a science museum. Uh, he knows Ken Wilbur and reviews his books. Some of you people would be impressed with that, I'm sure. Uh, he's working on his own book on integral consciousness. Um, uh, also, his lovely wife Joanne contributes to uh, their um, uh, web page, and she wrote a really interesting thing uh, called The Decentralized God, an American Vision, which I found really interesting. If you're interested in the founding of uh, uh, America and some of the uh, great thinkers that put their ideas into our uh, laws and our Constitution, that's very interesting. Taken from Jane Roberts. Uh, let's see, a quick story about how I actually met Paul. Um, I got an email from Chris Johnson uh, in England telling me about a conference in my own state here at CU. When I went to CU, they had a CU conference on world affairs, and it's been going on for many, many years. It's very popular. They have speakers from all over the world of every stripe, uh, journalists, uh, authors, scientists, um, I, I can't even remember all of it. Every, everything you can think of is represented there. And it it's draws a really big crowd. And uh, Chris told me that Paul was going to be speaking up there. So I'd intended for years to go back to these conferences, and something always came up. But I made a point to go up there. And uh, Paul was on several panels up there. And uh, the first one he was on was called Creationism versus Evolution. And it was extremely interesting because... Um, we had, there were four panelists, and uh, the idea of creation versus evolution sort of set the dialogue that it's one or the other. And uh, Robert, uh, Roger, Roger Ebert was on this panel, and Roger Ebert uh, represented the, um, uh, the sort of the materialist viewpoint here, and he had primed himself with Richard Dawkins and uh, he sort of set the thing to where it's got to be either or. Paul tried to introduce another way of looking at things, uh, and incidentally, he asked the audience how many people had read or were familiar with Jane Roberts and the Seth material. I thought that was really interesting. It was uh, in Mackey Auditorium. There were a lot of people there, and he got quite a few hands. It was really interesting. Anyway, without taking up any more time, uh, Paul Huffer. How are you all doing this morning? Well, that's a tough act to follow or introduction to follow. I hope I live up to that. Uh, as I get started here this morning, I want to second something that Christopher Johnson said yesterday in his intro, that it, it is an honor and a privilege to be here with all of you. Uh, it's very special. This is my, it's been 10 years since I attended my first Seth conference. And uh, it just keeps getting better and better. That's all I can say from there. So, well, we're ready for this thing, so let's fire it up, huh? No, don't touch that. Don't touch that dial. <laughs> Whole room will blow. Jim, can we get that projector going? It's a little Alex Gray image up there. It's just something to check out. Don't worry about that stuff. All right, go ahead, Joe. <clears throat> so what we're going to talk about this morning, uh, I'm going to attempt to, in an hour, to get through a lot of material. I'm not going to take questions until the end of that time. Uh, 
I'm going to give you a little bit of background so you can get inside of my head, my motivation, why I do what I do. I want to talk a little bit about New World View, which is really our Sethian group and, and lineage. And the, the bulk of what I'm going to talk about, I'm calling a New World Overview. The title in the program uh, is what I gave to Nancy Walker originally. And then when I sat down to actually do it, I thought, this is too technical. I'm not going to go that, that deep. So I'm going to talk a little bit about integral conscious creation, rocket science for the soul, but just in an introductory way during that segment. And then I'll summarize and we'll open it to questions. I started my training, the letters behind my name are, are from my music background. And uh, back in the 70s, of course, I read my first Seth book, Seth Speaks, in 1976. So I celebrated my 30th anniversary this summer. And it was a profound, life-changing moment for me, as it is for almost everybody in this room, however you came into it. Jane's Sumari poetry always galvanized me. It always inspired me. There's something deep inside that resonated. And during that period of time, as an academic composer, the, the uh, Thought Bird song is, is one of my favorite pieces from that period of time. And then I released my first uh, CD in 2003 called Mindscapes. And it's all uh, instrumental music, electronic. I arranged, performed, engineered the whole thing. It is available in the back of the room for those of you who might be interested in it. And I will also be doing some musical interludes today to kind of, because I'm going to do a lot of left brain analytical stuff and I want to kind of get some right brain relaxation and pictures. So those of you who don't uh, follow the left brain stuff too well, there's some fun stuff coming up, some nice pictures and music too to kind of break it up as we go along in the next hour. Hmm? Betty? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to Betty. Uh, the next part of my career, I went from looking for a job in academia music and not really like the professor in Helen Stewart's uh, presentation yesterday who burned his research well, accidentally, 20 years of research went up in smoke. Uh, my music career shifted into a science museum career, not unaccidentally, and the, the ticket into that was doing an exhibit on the science of music, what makes music. It was a traveling exhibit. And that was a nine and a half year period of my life. And it led into learning in the internet style. I was a chief principal investigator on something called the Science Learning Network. We spent millions of your tax dollars to the National <laughs> Consortium of Science Museums and K-8 schools and bringing internet into them. This was back in the early 90s. So the point of this is that community building, online community building, is something I've been doing for over 13 years now. And it's something I really enjoy doing, using the technology to help bring community together, and particularly this community that we have here. Of course, then, the next part of my life, I left the Science Museum in 1997. The Seth material had always been there. And you can imagine doing work in this hard science materialist environment. It is dead, uh, absolutely dead to, to the interior, the spiritual part. And there's a little, little cartoon here that's just, I'll read it to you. It's uh, Get Fuzzy Rob has two pets, Satchel and uh, Bucky, the one-toothed Siamese. And Rob starts out, what on earth are you doing? And Satchel says, I saw it on TV. Spirits can tell you things by moving this around a board. And he's holding something. You mean Ouija? Yeah, Ouija. <laughs> Only I can't understand what it's trying to tell me. Rob says, see, the thing is, there's a special Ouija board. You're not supposed to use a Candyland board. And you look down there. He goes, oh, I wondered why a spirit would go through multiple dimensions to tell me, gumdrop, gumdrop, lolly. And then, of course, Bucky finishes, I figured you channeled an idiot. <laughs> so that's just a little bit about me. The channeling phenomena of the Seth books were always deeply personally interesting to me. And so in 1997, uh, I left the Science Museum, and we'll get into that a little bit. New World View actually was coined, that term was coined in 1997 by Linda Dahl, who was running Seth Network International at the time. And so they got the domain name and, and, and codified that. Of course, Rob and Jane, and this is sort of, the, the next couple of slides are just talking about what, what is our lineage. And I guess the best visual way for me to explain that is, if I look at, I'm interested in English progressive rock. Yes, Genesis, Jethro Tull, those bands. And when you look at the different players, there's a whole chart of lineage. This keyboard player played with this band and that band, and the drummer was over here. And, and so I'm just cutting one line through this maze of this Sethian community that we're all part of. And that is New World View, but just to show you where we're coming from. So of course, we trace it all back to the work of Jane and Rob. 
And then Maud Cardwell started the Austin Seth Center in the 1980s. And Maud uh, started Seth conferences there in Texas. And as she got ill uh, towards the end of that period, Stan and Linda showed up and volunteered to take over the Austin Seth Center. And they founded Seth Network International in Eugene, Oregon, but I think legally it was still in Austin, Texas at that time. So Stan and Linda are you know, part of our lineage sages that we honor as we go forward because without them, I wouldn't be standing here this way today and a lot of us in the room wouldn't be together today. And there's the first reality change then that came out, I think, around 93, uh, number one. And that went on until the end, until 1999. We do have an archive of all of those uh, in our possession. And this picture, I believe, is from the 1997 Elmira, probably one of the most galvanizing gatherings of the Sethian community, over 400 people, probably the largest uh, formal gatherings. Of course, Rob Butts was there. Laurel Davies was there. And uh, we have Betty Kilty over here, Nancy, Michael Steffen, Susan DeLille, Delisle, okay, Potato Potato, Rich Kendall, and, and Linda. And at this event in 1997, we met what we call the Elias Kids or the California Kids, and that's Vicki Pendley, Ron Churchman, Mary Ennis, who channels Elias, and Kathy Churchman, who are very much a core group. Vicki on the lower left would pass away in 2001. And she did all the transcribing. Next, please. And so coming out of that period into 1999, 2000, we formed NewWorldView.com. That was with Stan and Linda, Michael, Mary, Joanna, myself. There were six of us partnering in 99, 2000 to get that going. Unfortunately, Stan would pass away very suddenly. And Linda would close down SNI and uh, step out of New World View. So around 2000 when we opened it was, and Mary would step out also to do her Seth bookstore and other things. And uh, so Michael, Joe, and I opened up in 2001. We held two conferences. So this is also my opportunity to thank the program committee. I know exactly what you're going through and the work that you put into this thing. And I just have such deep appreciation for everything that goes on to make this an incredibly smooth conference. So thank you all. And then moving on into 2003, uh, I met Serge Grambois, who was here two or three years ago, actually, with his partner, Mark Bucater. And he, uh, based on feedback from the audience, put out Seth Journal, which was an attempt at reality change to get it going again. And he published four issues of that, actually. And then it went into the way of the dodo due to lack of interest in subscriptions and whatnot. And also around that time, 2003, Don Beck and Ken Wilber are two integral, two leading integral theorists that we've had the privilege to meet and study under and would have a great influence on our lives and provide me with a theoretical framework in which to really make some advances in my own thinking about the channeling phenomenon and how we can perhaps legitimize it and make it more mainstream. Down the road, this isn't going to happen overnight. And then finally, to honor, uh, this is from the 99 SNI conference, the very last one. Uh, Laurel Davies, who is now Laurel Davies Butts, with the picture of Seth and Rob, who are really very much our patron saints, quote unquote, who we w just want to honor with their presence. And uh, so I think that's it. Let's go to the next slide. So that's the lineage. That's our path to today. Michael has stepped out of New World View. So right now, it's Joanne and I. We're a mom and pop shop. But it shows you what two people can do who are dedicated to each other in partnership and to a larger community uh, in service to that community, too. What we just released uh, the, in the last week is uh, the new New World View website. And I just want to tell you a little bit about it. Now, Joe didn't want me to use this because it's too corporate. But you see, <laughs> it's a cat toy. This is my Christmas gift to my cats. And my cats gave me permission to bring this and use this. So I mean, if you don't have them, they love this thing, right? If you put a dot on the floor, up on the roof, on the walls, cats go nuts over this. So they lent me this so I don't have to walk over and do this. So I just want to walk through this, this navigation bar very quickly and give you an overview of some of the f stuff that's on there. because. Those of you who've gone there, it's massive. There's a lot of content, and there's also interactivity, the community that's on there. So the home 
is just some basic privacy, the legal stuff. Over here in the introduction area is, is actually an essay that is an overview of what I'm going to talk about shortly. And, and our history, the lineage I went through, that's all there in the intro. In the gems area, there are random quotes from Seth, Elias, perennial thinkers, and there's Joe's haikus. Joe's written dozens and dozens and dozens of haikus, and, and it's a wonderful exercise in practice. Next in community, this is one of the, the heart of the site because it's interactive, and we now have SethNet is now hosted there. The SethNet email list lives on. I've moderated that for eight years and been through the wars and the joys of that. There's also an Elias forum, a Chris Chronicles forum, a Seth material coursework, a young man named Sean Foreman, who's a programmer in Minneapolis, uh, stepped forward and volunteered to go through the early sessions chapter by chapter and outline and build a knowledge base, and it's there if you're interested in, in going through some of that. And there's also the Inner Visions Journal, I should mention, that's for dream imagery and tarot and other things. Uh, and so there's a whole variety of things in there, and uh, we encourage you to check it out and subscribe there and, and participate and, and add there and bring your own voice there. Under community also there's photo galleries, files, sharing and blogs. We now have bloggers and uh, so the staff that I would say of New World View, there's 13 of us that are volunteering together to create this thing. Six of us are moderators and technical people and content people and there are seven bloggers. Uh, one of which is Richard Kendall, former ESP class members. It's called Running Dialogues with Rich Kendall and so you can go there and check it out. Joyce Kovelman, who some of you may know, uh, a wonderful old Sethian. Old Sethian, I shouldn't say that, should I? <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> she, she's a, a, a wonderfully aware Sethian. Uh, and hers is called The Gentle Way, and she is a gentle person and, and wonderful. And there's others. I have a blog called Integral Conscious Creation where I'll be exploring this stuff further as the years go on. So under events, we have a Conscious Creation calendar. Send us your notices. We have Mary's and Betty's uh, October thing there, Rick Stack's workshops that are coming up, some Elias sessions, things like that we will put under that. There's also meetups there where if you have a Seth group and want to advertise it, you can submit the information and it'll be under there. There's a marketplace where we're developing some products. There, all the Seth books are listed there with links to, to Amazon. So you can, if you click on them, we'll make a couple of pennies from that. So if you want to support us that way and buy your Seth books through New Worldview, you can support us that way too. And we have other books that we recommend and CDs and whatnot. The library is, is a large and growing area of, of some of the best conscious creation content that we have the rights to publish out there. Christopher Johnson has an article there in the uh, energy or healing and what is the topic? I'm putting you on the spot. There's a healing section in there. Christopher has an article in there. Um, Mary Dillman's spreadsheet, which I converted to a web page, uh, is in the reference section. So it lists all the Seth sessions. It's, it's magnificent. Barry Noonan has a, a bibliography of all of Jane's works and all kinds of things that he updates regularly. So the, the reference section alone is top. We have all indexes for the early sessions, nine different ones. We have Sue Williams, you're here, there you are. We have Sue's there. Ricky Stack has that on his site too. Hopefully he'll put it in his book on, in the second edition and get that, that out there too. Cool sites is if you have a website or other link, we'll do reciprocal links, places and organizations that we recommend. And of course, how to contact and search, just the final word there. You can search the content through that link, but also in community, when you're in the community site, it has its own search engine that searches all the conversations and it's state of the art stuff running off of the database. No, this is good.
hopefully that cleared some space in your minds for what's coming up next here. <clears throat> A New World Overview. An emerging story is being told, well, it's being created by all of us. And some of us are trying to tell the story and find a way to tell the story. It involves a new creation mythos. It involves a new postmodern type of spirituality and view of religion, a revisioning of how we know the world and what constitutes evidence of truth, and also the worldview dynamics that play a crucial role on all levels of creation and co-creation. This was my squeezing in what is natural because I didn't have a natural place to put that. So this is an unnatural look at what natural means. And as I thought about this, really my definition, the way I'm using it, is really a framework one definition. I'm not getting into metaphysics and other areas of consciousness and whatnot because I'm here in framework one. And so Mother Nature, the external world, the nature of personal reality, the internal world, a classic duality, a dualism that we're all aware of, body, mind, however you want to look at that. But n both are natural, the interiors, the exteriors. And one way to look at this is these fundamental perspectives that we have. We have first person, I, second person, technically is a you, but when I and you talk, we, we form a we, and this inner subjective space is a very natural area that has been completely ignored by modern science. And then third person, the it's the objective, external, inner objective systems view of, of things, uh, is a common way that science views the world. piece of music, by the way, is called The New Alchemy, The Dream Walkers, and it's inspired by Seth's creation myth from Dreams, Evolution, and Value Fulfillment. How do we know we're divine? So from this point forward now, I'm getting into the meat of this thing, and we're just going to ask some large questions and try and fill in some things and go through it. If stuff doesn't stick, if stuff doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. The important point is that I'm kind of planting seeds a little bit. There'll be some interludes, some pictures and things to kind of let it kind of juggle together as we go forward. But humanity has recognized that we have deep intuition, spiritual experiences, and altered states for thousands of years. And there's two basic ways that we look at that, the, the shallow, translative, exoteric, the, the costumes we wear, the, the rituals we do. Uh, and whatnot. And then there's the wider, more transformative view that's esoteric, it's inner direct experience, subjective experience. And so the conclusion basically is that spirit in some form exists. Now, I want to read something from Roger Walsh that, that emphasizes this point. He says that the words differ from one tradition to another, but their central message is the same. You are more than you think. Look deep within and you will find that your ego is only a tiny wave atop a vast ocean that is your real self, with a capital S. Look within, and at the center of your mind, in the depths of your soul, you will find your true self, and that this self is ultimately linked to the sacred, and that you share in the unbounded bliss of the sacred. So I wanted to also take a look at the perennial philosophy, and. It was coined by Godfrey Leibniz a long time ago. Aldous Huxley wrote a book. Houston Smith popularized it in the last century. The, this is a really good exercise to try and come up with your own summary of perennial wisdom. What are universal, natural tenets expressed through all of the traditions uh, that, we've, that we are aware of? Well, the first one is that the physical field is not the only reality because there is a non-physical source, which is not usually perceived by the physical senses. And therefore, as long as we never experience this source directly, we live in a world of separation and illusion. We can, however, learn to directly experience this source within and without through the use of deep intuitions. And of course, I threw in the Sethian through the inner senses. From the perennial traditions and the way scholars have looked at it, they talk about a great chain of being 
And this is a cosmological view of things. Seth's all that is as a multiverse, frameworks one, two, three, and four. And what I just want to point out here in this diagram, this is from Houston Smith's Forgotten Truth. The way he summarizes it, he puts two levels of reality and levels of selfhood. And this duality is interesting because the levels of selfhood focus on the interiors. And you see body, mind, soul, spirit. There's an interior aspect, we can call that. And that's simultaneously nested, and that's what the circles give us there, as the exteriors, wherever we are. There's a terrestrial, exterior, intermediate, celestial, infinite, and these frameworks and sets, all that is. So that's just a general look at that. So the conclusion is spirit or consciousness exists with a capital C. Our universe is a multiverse nested fields, most of which are not perceivable by the five senses in their extensions, telescopes, microscopes. And moving on, I want to use these terms pre-modern, modern, modern, and post-modern to kind of frame a big picture view of reality. Recognizing the limits, as Frank Collins spoke so eloquently to last night, of the limits of language, recognizing that this is all bullshit in one level. However, I'm trying to make my bullshit make sense and be internally self-consistent to all of you so that perhaps there, it has some utility down the road. So there's two, two ways I want to look at these terms. First one is how to distinguish between different periods of Western history. And the second is to de describe the development of worldviews in the Sethian sense, belief systems, in those periods in distinct stages. And this is something that is missing in general as a constructive criticism in the Sethian dialogue that we have. We don't hear a lot of talk about stages of development. And there's a whole uh, lineage and branches of science that have gone and looked at this in, in developmental terms. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. So the first definition, periods of Western history, this, this frames a nice story. And this is what I presented at the Conference on World Affairs as the alternative view to uh, the, the basically black and white of intelligent design, which fits in here in the traditional area of all the different uh, traditions and the modern materialist view, I, I offered a third version. And this is what I see as the emerging new world view. And it's actually plural. It's new world views. It's not a singular thing. More on that in a little bit. The, the one thing to point out here, so we have a timeline. We recognize all this. This is emergent. We don't really know what this is yet. There's a lot of talk about that, but this is the shift, these changes, Seth's 2075 probabilities, what that hints at, this massive change that's coming and being imaged uh, throughout all different levels of society. The one thing I wanted to point out here, value spheres, this is a way of looking at the historical development in, a, in an evolutionary model, and that the church controlled basically art, science, and morals. They were all fused and controlled by the authority and protocols and healthy and negative sides of the church. But the, what constitutes modernity, according to scholars, and this is from Max Weber, a German sociologist, that art, science, and morals splintered off as a result of the Enlightenment and, and the Renaissance. And they formed their own separate areas, and they were turned into institutions. And this plays off of some of what Frank was talking about last night, too, some of his slides. So, so we see a difference between traditional pre-modernity and modernity is, is the, the nature of the institutions and the political, economic ways they were developed. And so in terms of post-modernity, how that's going to change um, is, is up to us to create. Now I want to talk about the second definition. And I